Last night in game one versus the Indians, the Athletics' Andrew Triggs gave it his all, but his counterpart, Carlos Carrasco, showed off why he is one of the best arms in the American League as he was dominant. It was a pitcher's duel late, but good teams seem to always deliver when it matters. Carlos Santana deposited the big fly into the right field seats in the eighth inning to give the Indians a 1-0 victory. Tonight, it'll be Sean Manaya's turn to slow down this Cleveland attack. He will have his hands full as the Indians are on a roll and building confidence every game. It's the A's and the Indians coming up next. from the Coliseum. It's game two of this series. Last night, the Indians won one to nothing. They got terrific pitching. Tonight, we'll see Danny Salazar, very talented young right-hander. He will be opposed by the ace, talented young left-hander, Sean Manaya. That's your pitching matchup for game two of the series. It's the A's and the Indians coming up on CSN California. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Last night, great pitching matchup. Indians only needed one inning out of their bullpen. But, Ray, when you look at this Indians yeah. team, their rotation is terrific. And then now with the addition of Miller, their bullpen, boy, it's quite a combination. And yeah. I think that pitching staff for the Indians may be the best in the American League. I agree with you 100%. And if you really think about the Indian starter, he only has to go six or seven, turn it over to the bullpen. Dan Otero has been outstanding. They didn't even use him, and they did in Cleveland a little bit. But then you get to Andrew Miller, who the they saw last night. They have Cody Allen. They have a couple of closers that Terry Francona, the manager, can go to. Last night, Miller was outstanding. Struck out the three batters that he faced. Of course, Cody Allen was very open to the manager. He said, do whatever you have to to help us win if it means him losing his closer's job. But Terry Francona using both to try to win ball games and man they've got a strong bullpen. Mm -hmm. If that starter who went last night eight innings they've got a pretty good bullpen to match it up. So the pitching matchup Sean Manaya trying to finish strong Danny Salazar just another great arm. He has uh, having an all star season this year so that's your pitching matchup tonight. And you're really looking at a veteran in Salazar and a rookie in Manaya. both pitchers pitching well I think from Manaya's standpoint he's trying to gain experience and he talked about learning every time he takes the mound and of course he's going to do that with Salazar coming off the disabled list. They don't know what they're going to get from him but he's a veteran he's won 11 in ball games they know he can pitch and they'd like to get him built up so if they do get in a postseason they're going to have a pretty good rotation to start against whoever they face Indians have the best record in the American League they've won four to five the A's are struggling A's have lost eight out of their last nine we'll have lineups and first pitch when we come back to the Coliseum it's the A's and the Indians coming up on CSN California
on CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Jack's Brew House Bacon Burger today at Jack in the Box. Limited time only at participating restaurants. By Toyota. Toyota's Labor Day clearance event is here. For Labor Day only, get $2,500 total cash back on the redesigned 2016 Prius. Toyota, let's go places. And by America's Tire. Your low price journey starts here. So the big left-hander, Sean Manaya will take them out tonight for the Athletics. He leads the troops onto the field. He's wearing the all-white uniforms tonight. Game time weather for the ball game is brought to you by Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is open daily. It's a cool night, 62 degrees. As the Indians in town for game two of the three-game series. Good ball game last night. Unfortunately, the A's came out on the short end of a 1-0 Indians win. Here's a look at the starting lineup for the Tribe. Rajay Davis in there tonight, playing center field, and Kipnis at second. Lindor at short, Napoli's the DH. Santana, Ramirez, Geyer, Almonte, and Jimenez. And it'll be Sean Manai on the mound again as he will be making his 19th start, 20th appearance. Remember, one appearance out of the bullpen. And he is continuing, trying to do exactly that. Throw strikes. He did not walk a batter in his last start. Pitch. As he's 4 8 on the season. His walks just 28 in 110 innings plus. So it's a good sign for a big, tall left hander. Facing Rajay Davis, who's hitting 267, 11 home runs and 41 runs batted in. Great guy to keep off the bases if you can because he is so talented stealing bases and causing some havoc on the bases. Umpires tonight. Mark Carlson is calling balls and strikes. Alan Porter at first, Clint Fagan at second, and that's the crew chief, Brian Gorman. He's lined up at third. Uh, Shea Davis reaches for that one, pops it up in the right field. Or Danny Valencia waits, he's got it. So one out. A's defense tonight has Crispin left, Smolinski in center, and Valencia in right. And then it's Healy, Pinder, Muncy, and Alonzo. Bruce Maxwell behind the plate. Stephen Vogt has the night off. Chris Davis is the designated hitter. First pitch to Jason Kipnis is rolled foul. 290 for Kipnis, 20 homer, 67 RBIs. He had a double last night. Sean Manaya looking for his fifth win of the year. He hasn't necessarily pitched poorly, but he has just one win in his last nine starts. And sometimes you just get a combination of when you pitch well, the team doesn't get you any runs. And that's been kind of the MO for him as well as Triggs last night. No, that's, that's part of it. That's it right there. And he's not walking batters, which is good because he went a stretch of four consecutive starts without walking the batter. Then he had a three, a two, and a three, and then zero in his last start. Two two pitch, grounded right side. Alonzo stays with it. Looks like the ball came up a little bit on under Alonzo, but he handles it. So two outs here in the top of the first. And I falls off towards the third base side, so a little slower for him to regroup and head back in the third position. to first base. But it, Alonzo spoils Francisco a lot of people, a lot of pitchers. Figured everything close to him, he's going to be handling. So with two outs, here's the young shortstop Francisco Lindor. Lindor was one for four last night. Lindor looks like he has settled into the number three spot in this Indians lineup. I think it was off the end of the bat a little bit. Coco Crisp is there, and Sean Manaya has a three up, three down, top of the first inning.
Top of the first, let's look at the lineup for the A's here in the bottom of the first. Coco Chris, Jake Smolinski, Danny Valencia in the top three spots. Then Davis is the cleanup hitter, followed by Alonzo, Healy, Muncy, Pinder, and Bruce Maxwell. Danny Salazar, a, another right hander. The A's saw a pretty good one last night at Carrasco. So Salazar, a couple of pitchers the A's did not see in Cleveland. But I think Salazar would like to go a little bit deeper than he did in his last start, making his 22nd. But fastball, curveball, slider, change up. His fastball like Carrasco, a good one. There were a couple of different types of fastballs. Pumps the first pitch in for a strike to Coco Crisp. Hitting 235 with 11 home runs, 47 RBIs. Smolinski and Valencia to follow. One inning for Salazar in his last start against the White Sox. And interesting what happened after that, as reported by the Cleveland people. Third baseman Ramirez. He's got it. Well, I want you to tell us what happened after I give you the defense. Brandon Geyer's in left field. Rajay Davis is in center. And Abraham El Monte is in right. Then it's Ramirez, Lindor, Kipnis, and Santana on the infield. And Chris Jimenez is your catcher. Hey, we know that guy. Brandon Geyer. He gets hit a few times. Came over from the Rays at the trade deadline. But probably something that I know talking Tom Hamilton and some of the Cleveland people never seen before and that's for a starting pitcher to pitch one inning and then goes to the bullpen and each time the Indians hit it's going to fall in front of Rajay Davis he would sit down huh. and whenever the Indians were in the field he would get up and pitch he did for three innings in the bullpen second third and fourth as Smolinski jumping on the first pitch fastball from Danny position, Salazar. Right fielder, as Danny behind him, Danny Valencia comes up now as he was taking a look at Salazar as he delivered a high fastball. So Smolinski first pitch hitting. But they wanted to build up a pitch count. He did not go on a rehab assignment. On the 15 day disabled list was Salazar. But as Tom Hamilton said, Maybe they is to the new re-entry re rule. <laughs> Goes to the bullpen, pitches three innings in the pen, but the fact that he did it coinciding with his pitcher, the innings pitcher on the mound, he would get up and throw as well. Interesting. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Well, to build up a pitch count, I guess if you don't got a rehab assignment and you give up three runs in the first inning, did you need to do that uh, expo brought to you by? You can do it any time. <laughs> that was actually a better story, to be quite honest with you. But that's something that uh, very unusual. But you can imagine here, of course, as the game was played. Base hit right field. Valencia got a high fastball, shoots it the other way. Time now for the Nissan Keys of the game. More offense. Good start for the A's against Salazar with an out and two runners on base. And for Sean Manaya, taking notes because he says that every time he makes a start, he is running. And I think that's impressive for a young pitcher instead of just going out and pitching. He's thinking about every start, what he can learn from that start. And that's probably why he's going to be a very good pitcher at the major league level for many years to come. And I just hope he stays in that green and gold because it looks good on him. And they're all white with the white shoes. But offense is the key, and maybe this is a start for the A's that they can get some offense to help their starting pitcher and their team pick up a victory. So RBI opportunity for Chris Davis. 32 homers 79 RBIs. First pitch is a fastball on the outside corner first strike. Well with that story about Salazar and the fact that he, this is just his second start off the disabled list and Talked about the first start. You wonder how many pitches he's going to throw tonight. Right, exactly. So I would think that they'll be very careful with him. But the reason he did that maybe is to build up yeah. his pitch count. And but I started to say it was it was played in Cleveland, which the bullpens are hit. But just think here, if he's yeah. down in the bullpen every time his pitcher went out, he'd get up and start throwing. People would wonder what the heck is exactly. Going on. And you know you can't think about that really happening before, but you know. Terry Francona wanted to make sure that if he didn't stay in the game, of course they got down early, but wanted to make sure that he threw the pitches that as if he was in a ball game, but did it in the bullpen. 
Yeah. Salazar was an all star. Yeah. Having a really fine season, but then the struggles hit. 10 and 3 with a 2.22 ERA in his first 15 starts. And again, right elbow inflammation, yeah. and it, I'm sure that had something to do yeah. with the poor numbers. Boy, you know, I like to think about elbow in a pitcher, especially his throwing arm, and he does have a good fastball. Seems the fastball is lively tonight. Right field and deep. El Monte's back, and that baby's gone. A three run shot for Chris Davis and an early three nothing lead for the A's. Number 34 but fifth three run home run of the season hits the reason his RBIs are where they are but. What a powerful young man. Fastball from Salazar. He provided the power, and Chris Davis put a charge into it to right field. And what does that say about his power? And this wasn't just over the out of town scoreboard, it was several rows deep, as if it were a left handed pull hitter hitting the ball, and he went deep in a hurry. And still only one out, so the A's up 3 0. Another opposite field home run, the ninth of the year for. Chris Davis to right field. I think Bob Melvin said it best. He hits them like a left-handed power hitter, yeah. and which which makes him tough to pitch to because the old three, theory late in the game, pitch him away, make him hit the ball to the opposite field. Well, he can, as he just proved with that uh, long shot. Exmo brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. So 33 home runs now for Davis and 82 RBIs. Swinging and a miss. So Yonder Alonso strikes out. I said four. That was his fifth three run home run for Davis. Just an amazing power. Of course, a three home run game, three multi home run games. I mean, doesn't his first at bat look out for his night? Ryan Healy. He didn't give up anything last night. He gave group. up nothing. Wow. These were shut out for the eighth time last night. And Carrasco did the first eight innings of Damon. Strike on the outside corner. Impressive, actually. Andrew Triggs matched him for six innings. Salas or Carrasco went eight innings. One and one the count to Ryan Healy at 266, six home runs and 15 RBIs. He had two hits last night. And the breaking ball is lined to left for a hit. Fourth hit in the inning by the A's. All the hits have been hit hard. The amazing thing about Ryan Healy, look at this curveball. This young man, and this is exceptional for a player coming to the big leagues at such a young age. He can hit a curveball, and that's usually a pitch that sends a lot of players home because it's a curveball that they say, oh, I can't hit, I can hit on a fastball. But Ryan Healy can handle a curveball as he has shown in the short amount of time that he's been here. So here's Muncie, seventh man to hit in the inning. I guess the Nissan keys the game. At least the first part is okay. So Manaya can go to the clubhouse, write some good notes about his performance tonight, and then we'll be all set with the Nissan keys. Strike in the inside quarter. One and one the count. Stephen Vogt, as we showed last night, a tremendous throw and a caught stealing second base. And he said he talked to his good friend, Josh Fegley, who's on the disabled list. And Feg said, hey, great throw. And he said, immediately, he said, did you see Muncy at second base? The way he straddled the bag and applied the tag. And, you know, we talked about that, the importance of the middle infielder doing that. And Muncy said, if I have a chance to be a brick wall, I'll do it. With the guy coming in. And he handled it. But 
from a catcher standpoint that's the first thing Stephen Vogt said was about his positioning at second base and applying the tag on Naquin who went back rubbing his chin because he took a knee in some part of the chin. Muncy lays off and now it's three and one. Chad Pinder. If he gets a chance to hit here in the first inning. And that one is. Ball four it scoots away from Jimenez. So two on two out and here is Pinder. Well, we've seen Danny Salazar in the past, Ray, and if he's on top of his game, he's as tough to hit as anybody. <laughs> like a start he had last year, and I'm sure Delaire has that note about the start he had in Cleveland. Now he gets a visit. A little off tonight. Callaway out to visit with him. And saying, you want to you want to warm up in the bullpen for three more innings like us last time, or you want to stay in the game? Well, this is July 31st, and Salazar was pretty good. And, you know, you talk about elbow problem and see the breaking ball working very effectively. And that's what he's done against the A's in his career. Not tonight though. Chris Davis with a three run homer. So here's Pinder. Pinder is one for 11. Breaking ball well off the plate. And the skipper Bob Melvin talked about Pender and the pitchers he has faced. And he was quick to point that out himself today. And he has faced, <laughs> look at it in Chicago, back to back left handers and Robertson, of course, out of the bullpen. And then last night, Carrasco, but you know, like Manai and all the young players just hope they can learn. And it will help them in the future whenever they look back on some of the pitches they have faced. Pinder hits one high and foul on a 2 0 pitch. He's come in 53 and 72, and they're struggling, so they need to try to finish this series off on a positive note with the this game and then a day game tomorrow. But they've lost eight out of nine. So tough sledding right now for Bob Melvin and his athletics. Playing game number 126 on the year. These are 28 and 36 at home. They're trying to beat the Indians for the first time this year. Ricky's got to be happy to see some run support for his pitcher and toward right field Abraham El Monte is under it. He's got it side retired Chris Davis with a three run homer his 33rd home run of the year and that gives the A's an early three to nothing lead.
Chris Davis home run. Sean Manaya went three up, three down inning in the top of the first inning. 70% on shutdown inning opportunities for Sean Manaya, 16 for 23. Facing Mike Napoli, who's got 29 home runs and 87 RBIs. Tied for sixth in the league in home runs and sixth in the league in RBIs. Quite a season for Napoli. DHing tonight. He DH last night as well. Yes, he did, and he is not afraid to swing the bat as he just showed on a pitch out of the strike zone. Do not let him connect because he has proven that he can drive the ball a long way. Fouled straight back. So one and two the count. Santana to follow, and then Jose Ramirez. Chris Maxwell, excuse me. I'm sorry, Kathy. Maxwell catching uh, Manaya for the first time. It's been Fegley, McBride, and mostly Vote. Good changeup, and Napoli swings and misses. So first strikeout from Manaya. And that's the first pitch fastball missed. So it came back with a slider for a strike, and then ultimately struck him out on this good changeup, kind of a half swing. By Napoli. Batting in the fifth position. First baseman, number 41, Carlos Santana. There from Manaya, strikeout number 93, second among rookies in the American League in total strikeouts. Michael Fulmer is the leader. No surprise there, Fulmer having a very fine season. Santana leading off last night, hitting fifth tonight. And he was the hero for the Indians. A pitch that was overthrown by Ryan Dull, supposed to be outside, left it inside, and it was gone. Question fair or foul? Now, did it go second deck and it got clanked it? And it went straight down? Because I thought initially it did, and then watching that replay, it looked like a fan in the front row. It did not go second deck. Okay, thank you, Dallaire. I say that poor guy missed one in the second deck. That'd have been tough. Pinder, the shortstop, waits. And Santana is gone. How about this? It was hit a long way. It was, yeah, yeah. And had, unfortunately, too long. Batting in the sixth position, third baseman, number 11, Jose. So here's Jose Ramirez. Ramirez. First pitch to Ramirez is just a little bit low. Ramirez, 307 with 10 home runs. Been a hot hitter lately, but the A's kept him down last night. He was 0 for 4. He's a switch hitter. Strike inside corner. Say the Cleveland Indians offense, you say switch hitter a lot because yeah. they have a few in their lineup. That's right, El Monte, and they have four tonight. Four tonight, yeah. Michael Martinez is a backup infielder. He's on the bench, and he is a switch hitter, so five total. So one and two the count. So fastball upstairs. And we'll see if Manaya goes downstairs. Show me pitch, and he showed it up and in, and not a bad pitch to mess around with to try to maybe set up another one on off speed. And he gets him swinging on a pitch down and in. So Manaya six up, six down. Gets a couple of strikeouts in the second inning.
He's come to bat here in the bottom of the second. And it'll be Maxwell Crisp and Smolinski. So Danny Salazar. Not good in the first inning. Chris Davis gets him with the home run. He ended up throwing 27 pitches. We'll see if he settles down here in the second inning. Grounded towards second. Nice big hop for Kipnis. So with one out, here's Coco Crisp, and this was a big play last night, right? And many people, a lot of people, as a matter of fact, did not think he should have been called out to the challenge. He said it was not definitive enough. I think that was definitive that his hand was on the bag before the tag was applied. They upheld the decision, which was really probably incorrect, but it was a huge play. The turning point, the A's did not have a runner in third one out. Instead, it was two outs, and the home run by Santana was it. Lindor leaped, can't get it, and it's a hit. Well, I was I was glad to see Bob Melvin say you know what we thought he was safe even after looking at the replay because he said the same thing. Yeah exactly. Lindor very good job of timing his leap but not LeBron James jumping ability and this Cleveland Indian not able to get to it of course. Coco then said thank you as it got over the head of Lindor who jumped quite high but could not come down with it. So five hits for the A's. Here's Smolinski. Smolinski singled and scored in the first. is for the A's in the second half. This is their 37th game since the All-Star break. And this is the 32nd start for Smolinski. So he, much like Ryan Healy, getting a chance to play every day. Yep. And that man right there told both of them and the other two guys that Healy and Smolinski were going to be playing. Jake has played a little bit right field, but mostly center. With Billy Burns traded to the Kansas City Royals. Of course, he was doing most of the center field play. Coco, a an appearance every once in a while in center, mostly in left for him or DH. I think what has been the most pleasant surprise, and I don't know if maybe surprise is too strong of a word. I mean, Smolinski has looked pretty good in center field. Yes. Good speed, good jumps on baseballs, and has a strong arm. That's a good combination to have if you play in the middle of the diamond. But we've seen Ray we've seen corner outfielders play center field and it can be a little bit of an adventure good point yeah. but he looks completely comfortable out there. Uh, right handers ball to right field will slice away left hander left field will slice away center field to go straight at you. On the count to Smolinski. Valencia will be next. Broken bat is Salazar. Good sinker and good velocity and kind of moving down and in on Smolinski. And it had to look pretty good until it got to the point where it got on his handle and broke it. But as the ball was coming in and you could hear the sound, see the grimace on the face of Smolensky. His favorite bat just took one for the team. So he gets a new piece of lumber. Lays off. And he's working Salazar. Breaking ball, and of course, last night Smolenski, Carrasco was swinging at this at this good breaking balls, but much sharper, and it looked too much like a strike last night. Ended up out of the strike zone, but that's a difference 
and what Carrasco has done last night, Salazar tonight, especially with a breaking ball. So 3 2 1 out. Coco runs, swing and a miss, the throw to second base, the tag, got it. So it's a strikeout, throw him out, double play, and that's how the bottom of the second comes to an end. Bob Melvin says, hold on, let's take a quick look at it. Now that's Clint Fagan again. He was at third base last night, wondering or Sandy got him. And if you got him on the backside before the hand got there, he got him there, oh, and it looks like he's out. Ball. And looks like we're going to show their appreciation. But so, he is out. Three nothing games. Indians nothing. He's trying to even up the series at a game apiece after the Indians won last night. Six up, six down so far for Sean Manaya. A couple of strikeouts, so he's off to a good start. Indians come in with the best record in the American League at 72 and 51. Just a percentage point better than the Rangers, but the Rangers lost tonight. Third best record in all of baseball for the Indians behind the Cubs and the Nationals. Home field advantage makes a big difference. Sure. And of course, the American League will have it again in the World Series. Seven and a half game lead for the Tribe over the Tigers. And an eight game lead over the Royals, who won again. Nine in a row. What if Terry Francona misses his scooter that he rides to the park in Cleveland? Doesn't get to do it riding yeah. when he goes on the road. Can't take it on the road. No. So it probably gets in a taxi early or some transportation to the stadium because he definitely comes early. And Mikey Thalbum better make sure the door is open when he comes in because he does come. He may stay here tonight. I don't know. 12:35, first pitch tomorrow. Just got off work. Yeah, business person special. He'll stick around. Two two now to Brandon Geyer. Geyer, Almonte, and Jimenez. That one hooked foul. Plenty deep, but plenty foul. Well, the young man has it. Pretty good pickup for the Indians to get Geyer. As he has shown, and we have seen him play very well. 
Yeah, full speed ahead with Brandon Geyer. He does not back off at all. Got him from the Rays. Good pitch. Call the ball. Uh, evidently just off the plate according to Mark Carlson the home plate umpire with a pretty good look behind Bruce Maxwell. And he ends up walking him. so Geyer. Has a lead off walk here in the third. Here's greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. Home road breakdown for Sean Manaya this season on the road winless with a very high ERA at home four and three with a three point four five ERA. Right so. Position. Right fielder. Maybe not uncommon for a young pitcher, but Abraham the road unkind. Of course, his first road start of the year was May 10th at Boston, and he gave up eight earned runs in two and two thirds innings. So that really started him off on a bad note. Opponents average on fastballs on the road 429. That means he's throwing too many fastballs. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> I'm going to leave that one up to you <laughs> to explain what's the problem. Not throwing as many changeups and sliders on the road. Something about those strange mounds on the road, but they're all supposed to be the same. This one at home is seems to be better. One and one to Abraham El Monte. Over the mound, Pinder's there. He's going to take it himself on the first double play. Nice hop to Pinder. He was a couple steps away from second base. He just took care of it himself. Man, a lot of position, shortstop and second, but that's the time to just say, I'll take it. And he is there in case he wanted to, but the momentum carried him right to the bag at first base with Geyer getting down. And 10 pitch at bat for Geyer. Third pitch, a ground ball double play, two outs quickly for Sean Manaya. So here's Chris Jimenez, the catcher. Of course, the Indians thought they had Jonathan Lucroy from the Brewers. Lucroy vetoed the trade and then. The next day, Luke Roy went to the Rangers. The Indians were certainly disappointed about that, but they were able to get Andrew Miller at the trade deadline. They thought they had Luke Roy and Miller, but it did not work out that way. Yeah, the one guy who is the incumbent catcher on the disabled list, Jan Gomes, took BP today, so he may be close to returning. But you get to September 1st, which for the A's, it's got to be the second because they're off on the first, but can increase the rosters to 40 or 40 man roster which changes a lot especially for clubs in contention because they can add some pieces in the case of Indians they may have three catchers at the time something you normally don't do during the season the Cubs might be a rare exception to the rule they carry three catchers but one can play multiple positions ripped foul skips into the seats. Well, the garlic capital of the world, Gilroy, is well represented tonight. Chris Jimenez, the catcher. So, clubhouse in the end, it might smell like garlic. Who knows? I never know. Brings enough of it from, has family and friends bring it from Gilroy. He's happy to be here, though, because he has the support of the family. And now, three and two. Took off a couple of fastballs to go to the changeup. But oh, boy, boy, close pitch. A couple of close pitches in this inning, and neither have gone Manaya's way. Well, Maxwell asking Mark Carlson and if it was a good pitch or not. Definitely fooled. Well, he reached, but I mean, he set up in the middle of the plate. That's too close to take. 
I'd take the dirt off the black part of the play and say it's on the black, call it. And what we've heard is that umpires can go a full ball length off the plate, east and west, inside, outside, but evidently not tonight. Rajay Davis lofts one down the right field line, but foul. Davis hit a fly ball the right field to open up the game. Davis signing a one year contract. In the offseason as a free agent. He just continues to roll along. Another good season here in Cleveland. Solid all around. Stolen bases 33. So the Indians they wanted some veteran players some quality guys they got Davis and Napoli and both have done exactly what they had hoped. Juan Uribe that did not work out. Mm -hmm. Marlon Bird Marlon Bird that's right Marlon Bird signed with the. With the Indians he's not with them anymore. Mike Knapp would definitely work dead. He's got a couple of championships under his belt. He knows what it's like to win. Ty Van Berkeleo is heading coach sitting next to him, watching all these excellent hitters. But Aya gets the call there on the inside corner. Davis is called out. And that'll do it for the Indians. Bottom of the third coming up. 3 0 A's. Ace Baseball in CSN California is brought to you by AAA. Get a free Ace cap with a new AAA membership. Visit a participating AAA branch by August 30th. Restriction supply. 3 0, the A's lead the Indians. You know, there's nothing better than the short sleeve dress shirt with a bow tie. No jacket. A's cap with the sunglasses. And I tell you what, when you break out the short sleeve dress shirt, yep. Oh yeah. I'm looking good tonight. Oh, huh? I'm feeling good. <laughs> nothing, nothing like it. That's a happy man right there, too. Nobody around him. Blanket. <laughs> pizza. And he probably took Bart. He got on Bart and said, good. And here's our guy. Good friend. Yeah, he's got our jacket on again. That's right. Quick dry cleaning this morning of that jacket. We love our fans. They are good ones, and especially the drummer in right field. He just, just kind of look forward to every game hearing that steady drum beat in your head. <laughs> 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 
shot left field headed for the corner one hops the wall and Danny Valencia a single to right a double to left and a good start for the A's here in the bottom of the third. But a two strike double on top of it and all speed out in front of the pitch that he ripped the left heel after the base hit to right field so using the whole field. The ball came off the wall. Very nice with the guy although he bobbled as you could see but otherwise might have had at least a play at second base. So they say the best at going down to the corner is Ricky Henderson. I love on his, his right hand spinning throwing hard to second base with his left arm which is a strong arm. Inside fastball to Davis. Three run homer for Davis in the first inning. Smolinski, Smolinski single, Valencia single, and Davis unloaded to right field. Watch where this one lands. Well, and no doubt it's the right field. Reddick went back to back where the ball hit and Cleveland just kept carrying kept carrying. That was to center field. Kicks away Jimenez can't find it. So Valencia easily goes to third. Well that's twice in this last inning nobody on base this sending somebody on base and hey, there's really not much chance just overthrowing the breaking ball. Salazar just threw it so hard. No chance to block it. So the infield comes in. Missed outside. Now it's three and one. Since 2006, most home runs in a season. Thomas, 39. Swisher 35 that was in 2006 not too bad. Davis and Jack Cust. Jack Cust hit 33 homers in 2008. Came right at him with 96 miles an hour. Jack Cust 33 homers. Yep. This is a mighty swing and if the wind wasn't blowing or you just felt the breeze. Because big man started it. Couldn't catch up to it. Flags are out in left field. Flags are out in right field. So three and two. A fastball right down the heart of the plate. Davis had a good swing. You know, these four infielders know how hard Chris Davis can hit the ball. What do you think is going through the mind right now? Hey, a play in for the plate to plate with Chris Davis hitting. I mean, he hits the ball on the ground, the top spin. It has to be right at one of these infielders if it's going to be an out. If it is at him, it might take him into the outfield. And he walked it. Not close with the high fastball. So it'll be up to Yonder Alonzo. Now batting. Oh, Alonzo first hits first and third. Nobody out. So now you see if the infield, at least the middle infielders, do they move back or do they stay in? I think early in the game they're going to go for two, which looks like up the middle that's what they would be doing. Kind of halfway. Valencia runs well enough. And of course, a lot depends on the way the ball is hit if contact is made by Alonzo. Miss. We've seen defenses with Alonzo shift him to the right side, opening up the entire left, but right now this is straight up. And maybe because Salazar is pitching him away as he did with the first one. Valencia third, Davis at first. That one hit high and foul. And now it's 0 2. So. 
Alonzo have to put together a good battle here against the pitcher who tonight not real sharp but he's very much a strikeout pitcher. Yeah. That was close. 96. I think the elbow's okay. Yeah, I was going to say in the first, second inning, Ray, he was 93, 94. Yeah. So he's gearing it up a little bit. That was close. Line drive. Right field, Almonte coming in, he's got it. Here comes Valencia. The throw to the plate is late. Valencia slides in, and the A's have their fourth run on a sacrifice fly by Yonder Alonso. Change up, and they're just putting the four down, which a lot of times a catcher will wiggle the fingers, but he went change up. It was a high change up, and hey, for. Alonzo, who has followed the ball to the left side, watch the first baseman Santana acted as if he's, if he's going to cut the ball, and that's what you try to do to keep the runner from advancing to second base. And Davis had to stay at first, but Alonzo, a good job jumping on the high changeup, deep enough to get the runner in. Now Monte, a good job hitting the cutoff man, so Davis had to stay at first. So with one out, here's Healy. Alonzo gets his 43rd RBI. Quick throw to first. Uh, Almonte with a strong throw and Santana at first base. He's going to act like he's going to catch it. And just from Davis's standpoint, he was kind of at the point that he had to stay at first. If the ball had been air mailed, he could have taken off. And Santana, of course, with the throw the way it was, he could have caught it if Davis had started to go to second. Off the end of the bat, left center field. Geyer comes in, goes into a slide, and he made the catch. So a nice play by Geyer in left field. You're right, Kev. That's a good play because you go off the swing. If you can hear the sound of the bat, maybe, maybe not. But off the end of the bat, you think it's a big swing. It's going to go deep. Instead, it's off the end of the bat and comes short. And Geyer, a very alert play, coming charging and. Going into the slide, popping up quickly in case Davis thought about going to second base. It's good outfield play if you can read a ball off the bat that way. And Geyer did it perfectly. He's got to be happy to be falling on this nice turf instead of that hard turf in Tampa. <laughs> it's yeah, that's true. That field turf. First pitch strike to Muncie. So two outs here in the third, a run in for the A's. They lead 4 0. Just foul and a broken match. So 55 pitches for Salazar with two outs in the third inning. It has been a battle for him. Although the second inning, he got the strike him out, throw him out double play. That certainly helped. Went inside again. He's not afraid to go in there, is he? Well, that kind of a fastball shouldn't be afraid, and he's got to be happy. And Terry Francona has to be happy to see the live fastball coming out of his hand because any concern with the elbow has to be negated with the way he is pitching tonight. So the count even now, two and two. Once he walked in the first inning, he sent eight men to the plate in that first. And a full count. So good at bat by Muncie. That will allow Chris Davis to take off on the pitch. 
A good block, and this is important, of course, with the runner first base. Ball short hop into the catcher's mitt. Spolinski, last inning, got a slider three and two off the plate. Let's see what he would do to the left hand. He's been using the changeup a lot to the left handers. Foul back. Went with a fastball again, 96. Yeah, maybe because the changeup to Lonzo was up in the eyes and got a sack fly. No, Davis will take off again. Check for the change up after a fastball away. And he missed high. That was, now that was a fastball. That was 95, but he did miss. So Muncie walks for the second time, and that's three walks now for Salazar. And there may be going to get some action out in that bullpen. It has been a struggle for Salazar. And I think to your point earlier about the pitch count, how far would they go? Well, again, it's 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 the number, and it's also just if every inning's a grind, yeah. that's right. That adds a little extra to it, and every inning has been a grind so far. So Zach McAllister starts to throw. And you think of this inning, Valencia with two strikes, Davis, two strikes, three and two walked him, two strikes to Alonso, two strikes to Muncy. And there's a line drive base hit left center field. Chad Pinder is going to pick up his first big league RBI, and it's a two out hit, and the A's lead five to nothing. Had the first hit on Sunday, the infield hit. This one his first run batted in, and especially with two outs, high fastball. And I'll tell you what, he has faced some pretty good pitchers, and this time he gets the Salazar. Guy doesn't cut it off, it might drive in two, but it's first and third. Good swing by Pender, and young man getting a chance to play at shortstop. And Bob Melvin has talked about. Melvin has talked about him playing against righties and tonight this is a good example of what you can do. Get a chance to play against the righty. Stephen Vogt, the leader, said thank you very much. Gets his first review. So all this happening really with two outs. It started with a Valencia double. Now batting, the catcher, number 63, Bruce Maxwell. So here's Bruce Maxwell. Well, maybe Bruce Maxwell can pick up his first RBI. So, yeah. He grounded out to second in his first at bat. Muncie at third, Pinder at first. Fastball is outside. Maxwell with two hits in 24 at bats now. Do you think Ray it's a lot easier. Let's say Ryan Healy gets called up first of all going to the big league. So it's, it's not easy hitting big league pitching. But if you play every day for somebody like Maxwell he's playing a lot in triple A and then you play once every three four days and yeah. that's in the big league. Yeah. That's tough. It's tough to get hits. Well and a good thing for him and the important thing for him is to do the job behind the plate catching. And tonight doing a good job as he has a shot out in place and. When he has been behind the plate, he's done a good job. And again, talking to scouts, they like the way he receives the ball, the way he handles himself behind the plate. But to your point about not playing, you can't hit. If, I mean, it's, it's hard tough. enough to hit every day, but if you're playing once a week, or in this case, more likely the night game tonight, Stephen Vogt will catch Graveman tomorrow in the series finale, a day game. So that old day game after night game, we're using two catchers. Josh Fegley after strep throat is feeling better but he's still a ways away at least till the probably first part of September before he comes back. Right back to Salazar. 
side retired. A's get two runs on two hits. There was a couple of walks and a sacrifice fly. Fourth inning coming up, A's five, Indians nothing. Today's baseball on CSN California is brought to you by naturally strong, naturally beautiful Humboldt Redwood Lumber and Timbers. Visit GetRedwood.com. 5-0, the A's lead. It's the fourth inning. Indians looking for their first hit. Sean Manaya, two walks, three strikeouts so far. And run support for Big Sean. If you notice it, Ray, but we're being invaded by T Rex, a group of T Rex, and it's a concern. It's a concern. The concern is their location, <laughs> their seat location. But, but the, before they invade, they're going to take a <laughs> selfie. Wow. What, what is going on? Talk about getting on Bart and feeling good. Put that stuff on and said, "Yep, we're going to the ball game. <laughs> we're going to be big at the Coliseum, and they are. Oh, they're on the move. <laughs> Swing and a miss on a pitch in the dirt, and that's going to be strikeout number four. All right, Ford right choice. Let's go back to last night. Andrew Triggs, another good start. He went six innings, three hits." One walk, six strikeouts through 89 pitches. So, sit back to back good starts, Ray, and he's going to get another start. He's going to get a start on Sunday. He's swinging the bat. This is the big out with a couple of runners on base, fly ball to right field, and that finished six innings for him. But Mike Aldretti, A's first base coach, has the pitchers up in the batting cage and working on the bunting. St. Louis. St. Louis on Sunday for him. The A's will have the off day. So there's the former Cardinal hitting coach. Good pitch. 0 oh 2 to Francisco Lindor. Look how Mike Audretti was looking at the T Rex also. He saw him looking up and towards oh, center field. They, go? they left. I hope they went to get better seats. But they probably sat in center field so everybody would notice them. Yeah, and it worked. We talked about him. I talked about him. One and two the count. Lindor hit a fly ball in the left field in the first inning. It's this one toward Pinder. And Lindor is out. No oh, two out. Watch out, little fella. <laughs> That's 
That's not right. Now batting, Poor little guy. Number 26, Mike you know, we saw in Texas Michael Young doesn't like clowns. I wonder what he would do here with T Rex. I want to know where they went. I asked Ron watched about that. He says, oh, yeah, that's serious stuff. Huh. He, Michael, that was not show the. They inducted him into the Texas Hall of Fame and he's in the truck and. Elvis Sanders had a clown's that's face right. on. He was serious about not appreciating that even though Adrian Beltrade actually was laughing. Just missed to Mike Napoli. Probably funny for everybody <laughs> except Mike. <Hang> on. <laughs> Tommy Eds is on a roll tonight. Down the right field line and deep and that's a fair ball and it bangs off the wall. Valencia quickly to second and they got it. What a play by Danny Valencia. He made a perfect throw and Napoli is out at second base. So that's the first hit for the Indians but. Napoli. Is he race trying to stretch it into a double. Nothing. The A's lead. Danny Valencia with a very nice play in right field. He's also got a couple of hits tonight, a couple of runs scored. He will bat third in this inning after Coco Crisp and Jake Smolinski. Danny Salazar back out there. You see the pitch count 68. So the Indians will have a close eye on him. They had Action in their bullpen last inning. Again, his second start back from the disabled list. And right elbow inflammation. Inside corner strike, two and two the count. Mariners and the Yankees are tied 1 1 in the fourth inning up in Seattle. Little pop up past the A's dugout. Sabathia is pitching that game for the Yankees. Iwakuma for the Mariners. Iwakuma looking for his 15th win. And the Mariners won last night 7 5. So there's a look for you. Yeah, the high top shoes, Scott. Stirrups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Sanitary. Yeah, yeah. Or does he have ankle wraps or something? But. Whatever it is, you don't see many in baseball with. It's a different look. It's some added support on top. 
Does have the high stirrups. Looks like he has you know, all in one Sandy and stirrup sock, maybe. Didn't see much separation there. Kipnis, high backhand. So crisp is out. Here's the play by Danny Valencia to end the inning. Well, for primarily a third baseman, first baseman playing the outfield. This ball coming off the wall, played it perfectly, fielded it with two hands, made a strong throw. Pender keeping his face right in there, tagging the foot of Napoli as he approached second base. So the call at second by Fagan, who's been busy, but Pender catches right there. He gets the tag, and <laughs> but Fagan, I don't know if he saw initially, but obviously the pitcher, Manaya, likes it. I just wonder, Matt Napoli thought he had a home run. I mean, he's hit the ball hard, but if you're running hard, I think it's going to be a relatively easy double. Now Pinder stayed in, straddled the bag, made a quick tag, and there's getting the front foot. And Ron, Ron Washington. <laughs> Shot of the night. <laughs> Almost hit Smolensky. That's great when Wash laughs like that. Yeah. He's a worker, man. He's now Contra shows up. He's got him out with the flat glove, pancake glove, working on fielding. In the air, left center, and hit pretty well. Rajay Davis is going to get back, step away from the warning track, and he grabs it two outs. <laughs> So here comes Valencia. Valencia single and scored in the first, double and scored in the third. Danny Valencia. So Valencia has his batting average now up to 305. Salazar pumps the first pitch strike in. He's about hit the Indians seven to one. This would sky toward left. Geyer coming in and he's got it. So Danny Salazar gets a much needed three up three down inning and we are headed to the fifth five nothing the A's lead. Sam, you can get wrapped up in A's colors with a Sunday Great Fleece Blanket presented by Xfinity. Monday, September the 5th, you can be one of 15,000 fans to take home this green and gold fleece blanket. It's for the A's 105 p.m. Labor Day matinee against the Los Angeles Angels. Get your tickets now at athletics.com slash tickets. People wrapped up like it's a cool night. Mm. Comfortable night. Yeah. Comfortably cool. <laughs>
Five nothing. <laughs> Easily. Comfortably cool. That's a good one. Carlos Santana leading it off. It'd be followed by Ramirez and then Geyer. Santana popped it up. Left side of the diamond. It's going to be the third baseman, Healy, who has it. Sean Manai just one hit allowed. It was that Napoli ball off the right field wall when he was thrown out at second last inning. That's it. And what a great pitch to throw 2 0 oh to a guy who had a home run last time from the left side. Carlos Santana jammed him on a 2 0 -oh fastball. And when you have to count 2 0, oh, you don't have to swing. So that makes it that much more special a pitch when you can get an out on a fastball in a location where the hitter gets jammed. Ramirez slices one foul into the seats. That's that part of the place not being called oh. by Mark Carlson. It's almost forcing Maxwell to go in a little bit farther or closer to the middle of the plate or corner. Chases that one and it's one and two. Well, after missing outside with the fastball comes back off speed and seeing a lot of hitters swing like that tonight. Two and two to Ramirez. Ramirez hitting over 300 from both sides of the play. So another more good numbers for Jose Ramirez. In the air, Smolinski back and over. And he's got it. So a long out, two outs. Tom Evan Berkeley will probably say, hit that tomorrow, young man. You have a chance. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. So 23 pitches in Number the six. third inning. That's his Brandon high. Geyer. 70 total. Geyer drills one right center field. Valencia is not going to get it. Bounces high off the wall. Smolinski grabs it, and Geyer has a double with two outs. And that's what you do in the outfield. Center fielder Jake Smolenski with the ball in the gap, but Valencia went for it, couldn't get it, but Smolenski was there to back up and walk off by Daquan that we showed. Up to the little slow Abraham. getting to the ball. This ball slicing back. Looked like maybe Valencia could get to it over his head, but they're backing up with Smolenski. And it's a big 90 feet to keep Guy at second. So here's Abraham El Monte. Monte takes that time the outside corner got called. Monte hit into a 6 3 double play. His first at bat. Manaya, even though he's walked a couple, he's really had pretty good control on these. Seems like he's attacking the strike zone. You know, Captain, one thing about a lefty, and Mandaya, when he's missed outside, but when he's finished inside with a slider and the fastball, it's been very effective. It's just trying to hit the outside corner, which lefty to the outside part of the plate to a right hander is, is always diff difficult for a lot of pitchers. Same to a righty to a lefty. Oh. <laughs> and that looked like strike three. Wow, wow. man. Well, backdoor slider and Maxwell Come thought on. it. And the angle in which Mark Carlson had that a little difficult to see the outside part of the plate did not move with Maxwell. Toward Healy at third and Healy across the diamond side retired. 
So the double does not hurt Sean Manaya. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. It'll be Davis, Alonzo, and Healy. California.com. You can log on each week as insider Joe Stiglitz talks baseball with players, coaches, special guests, and more. This week's Joe's guest is A's closer Ryan Matza, a good guy for the ball club. A's insider podcast with Joe Stiglitz on CSNCalifornia.com, sponsored by Max Muscle Sports Nutrition, also available on iTunes. So that's McAllister up again. He was up two innings ago. You see the pitch count for Salazar about to throw pitch number 80. And that one's hit to right field and that's hit well. Amante hustling back over his head. Davis hustling for second and he'll be in there with a head first slot. And the night Chris Davis. Homer walk and now a double. And for Amante, Amante, you, you get turned around because you're thinking, well, this is right at me. And then next thing you know, it's scorching over your head. That's what Amante no, did is the ball. Yeah, really no chance. And Terry Francona looks like he is going to make the move to the bullpen. And maybe the pitch count cap is just enough to this shot off of the bat of Chris Davis. And he was running hard. And that's why he got in the second safely with a double. Turn the afterburners around first base to get in safely. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change, tune-up, and brake experts.
50th anniversary of Jose Canseco's historic 1986 season with the Jose Canseco Rookie of the Year bobblehead. It's presented by Kelly Moore Paints at the A's versus the Red Sox game Saturday, September the 3rd. 15,000 fans will take home this Bash Brother bobblehead featuring one of the greatest sluggers in franchise history. Get your tickets now at athletics.com slash tickets. So Danny Salazar, four plus innings, he is done for the night through 80 pitches. He hits five runs. Big blow, a three run homer by Davis in the very first inning. So Davis said second, that one bounced right back to McAllister. He thought about maybe getting Davis at third, but instead he gets the out at first. Alonzo hit it right back to Zach McAllister. Well, fortunately, it was off McAllister because Davis probably would have been out. The numbers now, for McAllister as he's had one start, but Ryan. one appearance against the Athletics. So he's 39, they got 38 games out of the bullpen. Maybe a check to see if he's okay. Uh, it sounded like he got in flush, but here's Davis heading to third base as soon as the ball was hit. And put his glove up just in time before he hit him in the right leg. It's Chris Davis taken off and hesitated momentarily, but the point if it's caught by McAllister probably would have had a chance to get Davis at third, but instead he's there. Infield has to come in. First pitch to Healy down and away. So 1 0 to Ryan Healy, who has singled and been robbed of a hit by Geyer in left field. So Healy is 1 for 2. Got a 10 game hitting streak now. 14 for 36 during that hitting streak. We saw him hit a good curveball in Texas against Kionakila. And of course, tonight against Salazar. Kila Keller. Keller, I think it is. Keller. Yes, Keller, I think you're right. Breaking ball, and it just missed inside. So another run out there for the A's to pick up. Three and one. A fastball in that he took and a fastball away. Field two. I don't know, maybe that was a they said maybe a good pitch by McAllister, but it was not the strike. It was a swing on or on the pitch location. Fair down the third baseline. So Davis will come in to score. He lead a second and he's got a sliding RBI double. Oh, six nothing the A's lead. Well, he almost overslid the bag. He started to slide late. The cap, what a beautiful thing to pull the hands in the way he did on the fastball that was running in. And that's a Salazar run. But pull the hands in. Now batting second base. And that's a great swing. Wow. Get the hands in and get the top hit of the bat. And going into second base, once the ball got past the third baseman, Geyer, a nice play. He was going into second base. Going in a late slide and he did overslide but grabbed the bag with his hand. Fortunately, Skipness did not apply the tag. A couple of doubles in the inning. There's Muncie. So six runs charged to Salazar now in four plus innings, and that is statistically done for the night. Don't average 20 pitches an inning and stay in a ball game long. Nope. Muncie has walked twice, so he threw out some good at bats against Danny Salazar.
missed again, two and one. Nine hits now for the Athletics. A lot of good at bats tonight. Runner goes. Ball's hit toward first. Santana stays with it. Flips to McAllister. So Healy was taken off. Well, you look at the count two and one, and you start thinking, letting go, get him to third, get the infield in, but put a good pitch for Muncie and just could not no, drive it past. But there's the jump. I mean, that was just a matter of Healy taking off with nobody paying attention to him. Actually, Kipnis. Let the pitcher McAllister know turn around and look because of the jump that he they had he may think about scoring but he stopped at third easily. So here's Chad Pinder. Pinder in the third inning picked up his first big league RBI with a single that scored Chris Davis. Pinder now with a couple of big league hits and a big league RBI. I think we're seeing the youth. Of course, that young man, he's still young and hitting a lot of home runs. Chris Davis, Pinder, and Healy, Muncie, some young guys in this lineup and getting a chance to play it tonight, putting up some numbers offensively with the rookie Sean Manaya pitching. 2 0 fastball. Well spotted by McAllister. He's if scored three in the first, two in the third, and one in the fifth, and it's just going to be the one. Healy with the RBI double. So the A's pick up a run on two hits. Sixth inning coming up, and the A's now lead six to nothing. The top of the sixth inning. Sean Manaya been the story so far. Just one hit. Fourteen total runs scored in his last eight starts. Six already tonight. So he's getting something that he has not got a lot of this year. That's run support. He's handled it well so far. 
think that's the biggest thing for him to gain the experience pitching and close games not getting a lot of run support that's only going to make him better as he gets older. Jimenez jumps on that one and hits it deep to left field and the Indians are on the board long home run for Chris Jimenez his fourth of the year. I guess there are a lot of people here from Gilroy because there's a lot of cheering going on of course behind the Indians dugout. Rangers doing well for the Cleveland Indians and Sean Manaya got a run in the bottom of the inning but this one taken back easily fourth home run for the Indians catcher. So it's now six to one. And to the top of the order Rajay Davis. A late call. Manaya will take it one and one the count. So this is the start of the third time through the lineup. So you got to watch that. It's been a little bit of an issue for Manaya. Well, that's pretty good fastball to hit for Tim and Just yes. unloaded on it in deep left center up in the the seats. Nice catch. One two pitch. Rajay Davis swings at the changeup. And that's five strikeouts. Well, that's a great changeup, especially you throw it out of the strike zone. This backhand is stopped by Maxwell. Now batting number 22. Andre strikeout victim a couple of times Kipnis. tonight. So here's Kipnis. Kipnis has grounded out and he has struck out. Swing and a miss. Yankees leading the Mariners four to one now in the sixth inning up in Seattle. Mariners have a chance to pick up a game. The Rangers lost. If the Mariners were to come back and win, they could get the deficit down to four and a half. But they are trailing. So the West, with that Rangers loss tonight. Rangers lost in Cincinnati three to nothing. So Seattle five back, Houston eight back. Astros lost as well today. Astros lost in Pittsburgh seven to one. So they playing a interleague series as well. Look at that face. Uh. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're good. <laughs> it's the I'm not sure what to do, but I'm very happy yeah. face. Yeah. See That's that right. a lot with little kids. Kipnis rolls over on that one. Muncie has it. So two outs. With the MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, watch every out-of-market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AdBet Premium. The number one app for live baseball, blackout, and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Very good off-speed pitches tonight by Sean Manaya. Hey, it's Glenn Schwartz right in the middle of those guys. What's he doing? Covered the A's back in the years. Is he sports editor for a long time, yeah, right? Long after time. after oh, yeah. he was a, a writer. Chronicle examiner? Yeah. And you know, for all the years, I thought it was Schwartz, no, not Schwarz. Yeah. <laughs> he corrected me. I was going to say, you <laughs> probably weren't the only one there. <laughs> it's just Glenn Schwartz. And he said, no. He's a nice man. He's a great man. Yeah, he's a very nice man. Ron Bergman, Jim Street. Good fastball. Lindor strikes out. So a home run by Jimenez. Couple of strikeouts for Manaya. So bottom of the six coming up. Six one A's.
Just about 7.30 on CSN California as the Quakes host the New England Revolution in San Jose. Every game matters. The Quakes, their playoff chase, it continues. That's a big game. Home of the authentic Earthquakes fan is CSN. Check it out. Six to one, bottom of the sixth inning. The A's leading the Indians. Zach McAllister took over for Salazar in the fifth inning after Salazar gave up a leadoff double in the fifth. Strike in the inside corner, one and one. Maxwell has grounded out twice. Jeff Manship. Seven relievers in the Indians bullpen, six right handers, and just the one lefty, Andrew Miller. Swing and a miss. Pretty good fastball there. Andrew Miller faced three righties last night. Didn't matter. I was going to say, <laughs> Andrew Miller can throw with whatever <laughs> arm he wants to. Yeah, they, he went through Smolensky, Valencia, and Davis. 13 pitches, 11 strikes, lights out. Callister, good fastball there, and he strikes out Maxwell. Yeah, it was as impressive of an inning as we've seen all year. Especially in a one to nothing game. His fastball now right away from fielder. Maxwell. Number four. But you, you're thinking Coco. about a Chris. closer coming in with a one to nothing lead. Making one bad pitch, it's tight. Yeah, exactly. And, and he did not make one bad no, pitch. No, he didn't. Everything was exactly where he wanted it. As good as you could see from a pitcher. Pitch to Coco Crisp is low. And you know, you think about it where the Indians are in the standings, and of course, they haven't won a World Series in a very, very long time. And I'm sure they gave up a terrific package for Miller. I know one of the outfielders that they gave up is people just rave about to the Yankees, but. You almost feel like it's a deal that they had to make. Oh, absolutely. Because they needed a left handed reliever to start with, and then you get a guy like that who's as good a reliever as anybody. And for the Yankees to trade two closers and still have a closer left. Yeah. And still <laughs> be playing pretty decent. Exactly. I mean, so it's really worked out well for the Yankees. It's Andrew Miller, a former Yankee, and of course the Red Sox before that. But a very good pitcher. And Trying to win, and, and we've talked about clubs. You get this close in playing in August and September, and you don't make the moves. First of all, you make a move like the Indians did. The team had to be ecstatic to get a closer, a proven left handed closer, and to know that at the trading deadline they were helped immensely by the front office going after a major piece. Not that they really needed that badly, but definitely got a good one. Strike three call. Coco didn't like it, thought maybe it was low. So two outs, and here's our quick and loans rocket arms. Has to do with relievers and strikeouts. Most strikeouts by relievers. This is since 2014. Miller's second. Cody Allen is fourth. So those are the co closers for the Cleveland Indians. Chapman on there. Dylan Batonsis on there. That's Cody Allen. Cody Allen, oh, he's three years away from free agency. Miller has a contract for two more years after this year. So they'll, Indians, if they stay healthy, will have that dynamite one two punch in their bullpen for a couple years. Not too shabby. But after they saw, and it's hard for us to say what happened in the NBA championship because of next door, but for the, the citizens of Cleveland, been waiting so long, and the Indians really have fed off of that considerably after watching the Cavs come from behind to win the NBA championship. 
They would like to be celebrating themselves. 2 1 pitch to Smolinski. Tap slowly to the left side. Ramirez, the third baseman, has it. And it's a three up, three down inning for Zach McCallers. Their seventh inning coming up from the Coliseum. 6 1. The A's lead. By first of this year, the Indians win their franchise record 14th straight game. It was a home run by Carlos Santana in the top of the 19th inning. He hit it off Darwin Barney, an infielder for the Blue Jays. And the Indians won that game 2 to 1. Cleveland won 13th straight in 1942 and again in 1951. The Indians lost the next day, but they have a 14 game winning streak on their resume this year. Not too shabby. That's not that, I mean, you're starting to get into the neighborhood of 20. A's neighborhood. Did you hit that walk off? Uh, that big home run. What position did he play? <laughs> Just mumble his name a little bit. <laughs> no, that was Darwin was Barney. Fun. Wasn't he an infielder? <laughs> uh, he, he was 98, man. He was. He's had a great yeah, fastball. Yeah, good stuff. Great arm. Yeah. I mean, he was. Just, I mean, so hard to hit. I was lucky to get a good pitch and to drive it as far as I did. A lot of pressure. Two and one to Mike Napoli, Sean Manaya. 93 pitches, six strikeouts in six innings. His only blemish, the Chris Jimenez home run. Two and two. Yeah, for a young man who has not caught Manaya, though Maxwell, perhaps at Nashville, but he has done a good job tonight. And every time he has caught. I'm sure learning a lot when Stephen votes behind the plate. The one pitch or the pitches that he's calling to force or have Manaya pitch inside of these right handers has been spectacular. Sliders down and in, got some change up, fastballs inside, and that's a good job. You got a lot on your plate to try to handle a pitcher, especially against a good hitting offense. It's a change up that he just called. And that was a good one. Maybe the best one he's thrown tonight, and he's thrown some good ones. So seven strikeouts. Well, that is a good one, especially when Maxwell, the catcher, just said in the middle of the plate, it's the the delivery. Now batting. And tonight, Sean Manaya with his big frame has dropped some very good change ups and sliders into the right hand. Definitely with the hit to right field, other than the home run, the double by Geyer, and the single by Napoli, it's been a good night for Sean Manaya. First pitch strike to Carlos Santana. And an 0-2 count, so throwing strikes. Sean Manaya and now Ray at 116 innings on the year. You figure Gonna get. Man, 
to change it. And Santana chased it, and it's another strikeout. And again, the wiggle of the fingers by Maxwell in the 0 2 in the dirt block nicely, but the swing by Santana aggressively going at it after a pitch that was in the dirt. So a good delivery by Manai again to get an aggressive hitter to swing and miss. So two outs, three consecutive strikeouts for Manaya. What I was saying, Ray, is you figure, I don't know, and I'm, I'm just kind of guessing here, but figure he's going to get, I don't know, maybe seven more starts, just yeah. give or take. So he may get another 40 innings in him. Again, I'm, I'm just estimating here. So you start getting up to 155, 160 innings. That's pretty good for a rookie year. Absolutely. Nice thing to build on for his yeah. second year and approach the 200 mark with a full season. Yeah, I mean that that's right. Then you 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 go to your goal next year and right. you know exactly what it is. Exactly. Yeah, Kurt Young's got a percentage of how they want to increase each season. 102 pitches tonight. Twice as many more than twice as many strikes and well, that's that's always good as well. He's got to be feeling good about himself to be able to have some runs on the board. Have a five run lead pitching the seventh inning. Two and two to Jose Ramirez. And the change up again. And hit hard. Nice play at third by Healy. Throws in time and a good inning for. Sean Manaya, he's retired six in a row. Seventh inning stretch coming up. Six one eight. Ball on CSN California is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota's Labor Day clearance event is here. For Labor Day only, get $2,500 total cash back on the redesigned 2016 Prius. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. So Walsh with a hug for Sean Manaya, starting pitcher. He was very good tonight. <laughs> Walsh is into it tonight. I like it. How about the size differential? <laughs> Talk about the fastball differential. How about the size? Manaya and Walsh. <laughs> good night for a big Sean Manaya. There is action out in the A's bullpen, so that will probably do it for Sean Manaya as Axford's out there. New pitcher for the Indians is right hander Jeff Manship. Someone it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. Manship, two and one with a 3.03 ERA. A lot of good numbers coming out of the Indians bullpen. We talked about Otero and Allen and Miller in the open of our show. And those three you might not see tonight. Nope. 
Yeah, it's a series finale tomorrow afternoon. There's Dan Otero. And to his left is the hard throwing left hander we saw last night, Andrew Miller. That's good to see Dan Otero yeah. regain his form. He had such a good year for the A's a couple of years ago. Lost it last year a little bit. Well, one of the problems I think that and happens is a ball like that, a ground ball. If you're a ground ball pitcher, you hope the ground ball ends up close to an infielder. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, it becomes a base hit. And what happened to Dan Otero is exactly that. And now about the really bad hitter. Trevor Cahill, 19 wins in five months, ground ball Davis. pitcher. But Andrew Miller just blows sliders and fastballs by, but Dan Otero relies really on the sinker, the slider, and ground ball out. Keep the ball on the ground. You just hope it's close to an infielder. And as we have talked a number of times, pitching and defense going to win you games. And that's why the Indians are where they are right now. Big night for Chris Davis. He hit a three run homer in the first, he walked and scored in the third, he doubled and scored in the fifth. So his tremendous season continues. That one is just foul. See the top spin on that? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Brian Gorman didn't see it. Because it got on him fast as well. Rich Davis makes contact. One, two bounces, and that third or the second one is it picked up speed. Here is backing up really not much of a chance to to make any sort of play. No two pitch and he got him with a breaking ball. So Davis strikes out. Five strikeouts tonight by A's hitter. He struck out 12 times last night. Same motion as a fastball and then pulls it down very hard on the breaking ball. So here's Alonzo. Yonder Alonzo had a sacrifice fly in the third, so he's helped out in the scoring tonight. He's also struck out and grounded back to the pitcher. Driven toward left, but Geyer's got room, and Geyer has it, and Jeff Manship has a three up, three down. Bottom of the seventh, eighth inning coming up, six to one. A's lead the Indians. The game, Shabadaya, very deserving for the left handed He had a one-two-three first inning, and then a three-run home run by Chris Davis gave him an early lead, and he settled down and did great after that, as he would end up throwing a very good fastball. 
Then he ran inside of the right handers had a good change up with a slider Maxwell his catcher did a brilliant job behind the plate a big hug from Ron Washington they finish off seven solid innings from a left hander. So six one when it's time for change think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and break experts. So it's John Axford. Axford taken over here in the top of the eighth inning. Hundred and four pitches for him and I. And Seventy one strikes which is good. Game, yeah. 55th appearance for John Axford so he's been a workhorse out of the athletics bullpen. By the way this is Lonnie Chisenhall who's hitting for Geyer. Left handed hitter in there. Chisenhall right at 300. El Monte to follow and then the catcher Jimenez. Three and one. El Monte waiting in the on deck circle. Good fastball, expert 97 miles an hour. He never loses his velocity. No, he doesn't. That's for sure. Yeah. And good 12 to 6 curveball and the, the high octane fastball up in the zone. Just not hitting. And you might think, well, here's a, a case of the Indians platooning with Geyer and Chisinau, but. Smolinski on the move and he caught it. What a play by Smolinski. That was a great play. Hit very hard by Chisinau. But Jake Smolinski, guy, if you said it best at the beginning of the game, the way he's been covering some outfield ground, and this ball was headed for a double. And all of a sudden, great angle and a huge dive. Look at his feet coming up, hitting the ground hard. Smolinski reaching as far as he could. And that is a tremendous play to hit the ground as hard as he did and maintain control of the baseball. Ground cannot cause a fumble. It didn't there, but his head really banged hard into the turf. That is a tremendous play and a big smile on his face afterwards. Not on his, though. So that was special. And here's El Monte. El Monte shoots one hard, but foul. Sometimes you got to give it to him. <laughs> great shot. Exmo brought to you by. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great catch. Yeah, you know, we talked on the road. Let's, let's see. Texas, maybe he was eating Cheetos, the, the hot flaming Cheetos mm -hmm. for good luck. You should have seen the concoction he made tonight. Now he's got to duplicate it tomorrow. That's he's, right. he's had a good night. And, you know, no superstition, but. He will do the same thing tomorrow. And it was something that I don't think you're average rank. No, no, probably not. No, no. I mean, he had everything in there. Brian Davis kept featuring stuff, helping him. It, it was so thick, the blender would hardly work. <laughs> That's how many different items going on, he had in there. But he'll figure it out and remember exactly what he put in and have it in it tomorrow because it's been a definitely good night for Jake Smolinski. So one and two the count. And another foul ball down the left field line. Coco will run out of room. Indians have not had a hit since that Jimenez home run. Seven in a row have been retired. Uh, Melvin hoping for a win tonight and a win tomorrow afternoon to win the series behind Kendall Graveman. It's hard to say before Chisholm hit the ball and 
great play by Smolensky that you have a right hander pitching the next day. It seems like managers want to try to get guys in the lineup late who are probably going to be playing. And I think Chisinau would be in right field where he normally is with the right hander pitching. Graveman has done an outstanding job. He's going for win number 10. Two and two the count. Sean Manaya a chance for win number five. Another foul ball. So Graveman and Trevor Bauer will square off tomorrow. Bauer nine and five. Graveman nine and eight. You can see the game on the MLB Network or listen in on 95.7 the game. Well, Graveman sinker has been working and Stephen Vogt will be behind the plate once again catching him tomorrow afternoon with the day game after this night game. She's ready. Now the counts three and two to El Monte, who has hit into a double play and grounded out. McClevenger starts to throw. And a good pickup, good five for them. He is throwing well. Middle, and that's going to be a base hit. So El Monte, after a long at bat, and it ends with a base hit. Pretty good at bat for Abraham El Monte. Chevron and the Oakland A's have once again partnered to bring the science of the game program to local first through eighth graders. A area students have the opportunity to earn a pair of tickets to a regular season A's game by completing fun and challenging science questions about the game of baseball. T Rex, maybe? Get more info at athletics.com slash science. What a great picture to put up there when you're talking about science and dinosaurs and how about that? Well, they're, still, everything. they're still here, huh? Well, Terry Francona is trying to get something going here. He's going to send up Tyler Naquin as a pinch hitter. You know, Guyer had a 10 pitch at bat against Manai. This was a 10 pitch at bat that Al Monte just had. So with Amante at first in the top of the order coming up. Sometimes as the manager you think you know what this may be my best shot Absolutely. to just get yep. a rally going with. You know, turn the lineup over. Make when swings and misses. Naquin was in the lineup last night. He went one for four. Good swing there by the rookie outfielder for the Indians. Teammates and best buddies. Yeah, it they're, happens they're when you're in first place. Yeah, they're trailing in the game, but in first place in the division, yep. so you can do that. Another foul ball. John Axford's throwing a boatload of pitches, mostly because the Indians keep fouling him back. On deck is Rajay Davis. Thank you. 
Max for 21 pitches. And he's got one out. Twenty two pitches and the foul balls just keep coming. Probably not exactly what Bob Melvin had hoped no. for to have Axford to come in to pitch the eighth and throw that many pitches and. They gave up a base hit to Almonte on the 10th pitch. The stall tactic that ball goes in. Right field. Sure. Warning track. It's all in the seats by Valencia. So we'll do one two again. Curveball spins well outside. Hit by Almonte was just the fourth for the Indians. So just in case things start to go in the bad direction here, Zipjinski starts to loosen up. Fastball, Nicklin swings and misses. So when it's all said and done, Axford gets the strikeout. That's the pitch that Nicklin swung at last night from Liam Hendricks, almost the exact spot. This run is at second and third in a one to nothing game. Number 20. Liam Hendricks, couple Ron strikeouts, Hendricks. getting Marte after Nick when he struck out. I think he likes the ball down, right? Yeah, I think he, he does, does not, too. He has <laughs> not been able to catch up yeah. with that fast. That's a great point. So now to the top of the order in Rajay Davis. Jay Davis has hit a fly ball to right field and he has struck out twice. Top three hitters in that Indians lineup, 0 for 9. So Axford now at 26 pitches. Rajay tried to hold up about halfway through his swing. That usually does not work. Well, you're down the way they are. You start, <coughs> excuse me, realize that. It's out of the strike zone, but oh, please don't. Yeah, I follow. You know it. It's ball three. He's there, and these will get the out at second. Side retired. The inning started with really one of the best catches we've seen all year, and it was by Jake Spolinski. Fully outstretched, a tremendous play by Spolinski.
Presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. All right, game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. 1-4-0 for the Indians, 6-9-0 for the A's. A's started hot with Chris Davis' three-run homer in the very first inning. Sean Manai was terrific. Seven innings, eight strikeouts, 104 pitches. And again, the Davis home run early. Good stuff there. And for Danny Salazar, he just did not have it tonight. Now batting. So the new pitcher is Mike Clevenger. Clevenger takes over. He's the fourth pitcher of the night. Chris Davis, on the offensive hero, scored three runs with that homer and a double. Clevenger deals to Ryan Healy, who's got a couple of hits tonight. He is two for three, single, double RBI. Another power arm out of the bullpen of the Cleveland Indians and. He is showing the ability to throw and just rear back and throw hard. Down the left field line. Almonte's not going to get it, and it drops. Healy digging for two, and Healy will make it with a slide. Third hit of the night for Ryan Healy. Sider off the end of the bat, and Got a hustle and he has done it twice. This time sliding a little bit earlier instead of waiting too long to slide. And possibly oversliding the bag, but look, see that it's going to fall and just run hard and fast as you can. Well, cut off nicely and a strong throw in the second. It's good to see outfielders throw well. You don't see that as often, but good hustle. And Keep your foot on the bag. That's right. Kipnis. Go after him and tried to keep the tag on, but did not. So the changes. Almonte is now in left. Naquin is in center. Chisenhall in right. Perez is the catcher. So Almonte, Naquin, Chisenhall, left, center, and right. So Max Muncy hits for the fourth time. He's walked twice and he has grounded out. Five run lead, but a good time for situational hitting. Get out in front, roll over, pull the ball. Something he has been trying to do, and he does wait a long time, which sometimes prevents him from being able to pull the ball, which ideally that's what he wants to do. Every run important. Score early, score often. Sides. Here, Major League Baseball announced the postseason schedule today. Of course, the season ends on October 2nd, which is the Sunday, and the American League Wild Card game will be Tuesday, October 4th. The National League Wild Card game will be Wednesday, October 5th. So, Tuesday and Wednesday for the Wild Card games. Of course, the Monday after the regular season, they keep that open in case there's tiebreakers. If they needed more than one day, then they would just slide one of those wild card games back. So a wild card game Tuesday American League, Wednesday National League, and then the division series for the American League would start on Thursday. The division series for the National League on Friday. So that's how that first week of the postseason would break down. It's always fun. Muncy taken all the way on 3 0. And that's why there are times you think about the division winner gets four days off. Mm -hmm. Wild card stays sharp. And they play Tuesday, Wednesday, and just one day off before the game, one day after, and then they start. Whoever wins it starts. And although they usually have to use one of the top line pitchers to get past the wild card game or into the, or the division series. Muncy has a base hit. Haley will go to third. Wash will hold him up. One, two, three, go! 
2017 season ticket memberships are on sale now. Whether you want to renew your membership or join the party, visit athletics.com slash 2017. You'll find all the benefits that A's membership has to offer, including early bird incentives, exclusive experiences, half price parking, a flexible ticket exchange program, and more. You can even lock in your 2017 seating location. Visit athletics.com slash 2017 and join the party. That swing by Max Muncy was outstanding. You can see him just get on top of it and really doing a great job of trying to pull the ball. And he not only pulled it, got the run to the third, but got a base hit himself. And Pinder with a great chance for an RBI breaks his bat and the ball just trickles to first baseline foul. So 0 and 1. Pinder 1 for 3 with an RBI single. He's happy about his base hit, but boy, it really had to be ecstatic about a two out run scoring single against a very good pitcher in Salazar. This one left center. Play Chris Davis. Night for Davis. Three runs scored, three hits, or two hits, and a walk. Caps it up the third baseline. Foul. So, and shortstop behind in the count 0 and 2. 11 hits now for the Athletics. Three for Healy. Two for Davis. Two for Valencia. Pitch is a slider outside. Swing and a miss and a foul tip. So holding on is Perez. So Pinder cannot get that run home, one out. Hey, note all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai tonight at 10:30 on CSN Bay Area. We'll have the highlights and clubhouse reaction from this game. Del Rio on St. Bolt's NFL prospects. Oh, don't know what that's all about. Could be good. A Raider on dating a gold medalist. It's all coming up on CSN Bay Area tonight. Ahmed Fried and Kelly Johnson will host. So with one out, and here's Bruce Maxwell. Maxwell looking for his first hit. And they're in the ninth inning now up in Seattle with the Yankees leading the Mariners four to one. Mariners letting a chance to pick up a game slip away. Good point, Kat, because when you're playing the West Coast and team that you're chasing is on the East Coast and you already know the result, yeah. that's frustrating. The Reds beat the Rangers three to nothing. That's the third straight loss for Texas. Straley over Holland. So the Rangers got Derek Holland back today. Dan Straley continues to pitch He's pitched well. very well for the Reds. Pirates beat the Astros 7 1 in Pittsburgh. Blanco with a couple of home runs. So the Astros had won four in a row, and that win streak stops. Those crazy Kansas City Royals are making their move. They beat the Marlins 1 0 in Florida. They've won nine in a row and 12 out of 13. Foul tip drops out of the glove of the catcher Perez. Tigers beat the Twins eight to three. Chris Smith starts to throw. Max 
Maxwell trying to get Healy home. And a line drive and a base hit left center field, and that's going to scoot all the way to the wall. Healy scores. Here comes Muncie, and Muncie will score. And Bruce Maxwell has to feel good about that. A big hit, a two run double. It's caught an outstanding game, and it comes through with that kind of a hit on a two strike pitch. So he got his major league, first major league hit against Tomlin of the Indians at Cleveland, thrown out at second. But this is a big hit because it's two strikes. Get the head down, solidly hit the left center. And you're right, once the ball hit the ground, it took off and into left center. So Maxwell gets his first RBI. Now batting left fielder, number four. Congratulations to him. Chad Pinder got his first RBI earlier in this game. Dick Callahan didn't say anything about Pinder, though. Didn't he? No. Let's get on Dick. But that's a nice announcement about Bruce Maxwell. Maybe Pender said, hey, Max, I did that just to you know, let you get a chance. There's still only one out. He's now leading eight to one. Coco taps one slowly. Clevenger throws. Not in time. Wow. Hey, look at that. Nice Nelson. play by Santana. Yeah. It's a great play on both ends. Clevenger picking the ball, throwing off balance. Nice pick by Santana. Coco down the line, hustling. Short hop. Center fielder. Play ball. Brad Mills Jake. hung up the phone. Hustling down the line was Coco, and boy, just barely beat it out, but gets an infield hit, so another first and third. Now Coco's two for five. So have a real good night, Jake Smolinski. Yep. Smolinski. One for four. Grounds this one towards short. Lindor is going to take it himself. And the throw is high. Safe run scores. So Maxwell scores. Should have been an ending ending double play, and the A's get another run. And since you can't assume a double play, it's an RBI. But Lindor had plenty of time as he took it himself to the bag. Plenty of time and there's the high throw but the good hustle by Smolinski. As Alan Porter indicating that it came up did not come down in time to tag him and Jake Smolinski hustling and no double play turn and Lindor. A little upset with himself as he should have been considering the way the throw went to first base but good hustle by Smolinski and. Run does score. So it's now. Nine to one, the A's lead. Here's Danny Valencia. Valencia popped it up. Santana and Kipnis together, and then Kipnis dropped it. A little miscommunication, and right at the last second, Kipnis realized that Santana backed off, and he went to basket catch it, and he dropped it. Well, a routine fly ball. And Smolinski's going to hustle the third base and go right at the last instant. He tried for it. And, and oh, let's go back and get it almost with a basket catch. Actually had it in his glove. So it's an air. First air of the night for the Indians. Second air in this series. And Chris Davis gets in that bat. Davis may not have thought he was going to get an at <laughs> three hitters ago, but he does. And by rights, he shouldn't have. Yep. A couple times. Yeah. yeah. 
rolls that one foul headed down toward the bullpen. Smith is ready. He's been warming up for a while. Oh and two to Chris Davis. And uh, a hard slider and gets Chris Davis, but the A's score three runs. And now we head to the ninth. A's three outs away from a win. So it's the top of the ninth in the A's with a commanding nine to one lead as Chris Smith comes in. Smith. He doesn't mess around. He's ready to work. So when it's time for change think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and brake experts. A change up and it's one and two to Jason Kipnis. Remember East post game live coming up at the conclusion of our game. Kipnis tonight, a couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Sean Manaya went seven innings tonight, three hits, one run, eight strikeouts. Axford pitched the eighth. Smith here in the ninth. Strike three called at the knees. Kipnis can't believe it. Too late to. Think about walking, take a swing, and he did not. And Mark Carlson said, good enough for strike three. Number 12. Chris Francisco Smith, big strikeout. He threw a good change up for the second strike and get the benefit maybe of a low strike call. So here's Lindor for his fourth at bat. Team photo day today, and Chris Smith was ecstatic. He said, He made it. I made the photo. This is great. Uh, he's it's been refreshing since he's been with the ball club to have the attitude that he has had. It's been a couple of seasons in independent baseball. You come to the big leagues and wearing a big league uniform, enjoying all the luxuries of playing at the major league level. As he should. Absolutely. Everybody should. And he's proof that you don't take anything for granted. 
A couple of catchers discussing tonight's game. Ten strikeouts tonight by these pitchers. Day game tomorrow. Indians will be in Arlington this weekend. They got a big four game series against the Rangers Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Days will be in St. Louis Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Interleague baseball. We just came off the road, didn't we? We did. Well, we're back on it. St. Louis and Houston. Now, this is the third stop. That's right, I forgot. Right, did we get a follow through? On. Checking on him. Buncey, couple steps to his right. And that's the second out here in the ninth inning. He's one out away from win number 54 on the year. Catcher said that he had to keep your hands on the bat. Number 26. That way you don't follow Mike through and you don't hit Napoli. me with the follow through. So in steps Mike Napoli. Napoli has one of the Indians' four hits. It's a single back in the fourth inning. First pitch in first strike. Good breaking ball. Snaps right in there and it's 0 and 2. Napoli does not go after that one. Graveman tomorrow in the day game. So three and two. Third hitter, he's gone three and two. The first two, strike out and the ground out. Trying to do the same thing to finish it off with Napoli. Grounded toward Healy. Healy has it. Across the diamond, and that's the ball game. So the A's put together a terrific all around game behind Sean Manaya's seven innings of work, an early home run by Chris Davis. And lots of good at bats tonight by the Athletics. So the game took two hours and 43 minutes, played in front of 13,141. So the series is tied. It'll be the rubber game tomorrow. Kendall Graveman will get the ball for the Athletics. So after being baseball is a crazy game after being shut out last night, really had no action at all offensively tonight. The A's. Again, have a whole bunch of good at bats, and they end up with nine runs on 13 hits. So that's the way baseball works. But it was nice to see good at bats, and it was nice to see a, a young pitcher put together another good performance. And uh, we're starting to see more of those from Sean Manaya and tomorrow's starter Kendall Graveman. Yeah, and I think uh, for Kendall Graveman tomorrow, following Sean Manaya, these guys like to build on each other's performances. And even last night, Andrew Triggs just no run support, and we're talking about the same thing tonight. With Sean and I, he gets a three spot in the first inning, which had to be really, really yeah. helpful, especially retiring the order in the first inning and the same in the second, so he had to shut down inning. But offense is what he needed. He got it. And tonight, it was a great night for him to pick up the win finally to get the offensive support and the win on top of it. And you could tell early on Danny Salazar, the Indian right. starter, just did not quite have it. And the A's certainly took advantage of that with those early runs and that. Uh, 
Maybe that helps Sean Manai to relax a little bit. We'll find out. He's standing by downstairs. He's the winning pitcher tonight. Sean, thanks for stopping by. Early home run by Chris Davis. All of a sudden, you're up three nothing. How much does how much does that settle you in and let you relax a little bit? Oh, you know, it helps me out a lot. Um, you know, when the uh, when the offense comes through, then I can just uh, you know go in cruise mode and and uh, you know attack with my fastball. And that's what uh, you know the offense did a really good job today. And um, I was just happy with how things turned out. And you're talking about your fastball, Bruce Maxwell. You're catcher seemed to be calling off speed pitches and when you threw the fastball you had a tendency to throw it more inside of the right handers but talk about your off speed pitches and really going with your catcher Maxwell especially getting the strikeouts that you did. Yeah Bruce called an amazing game today and uh, you know, I, I was really happy how he uh, you know blocked the balls when I got 0 2 or 1 2 and uh, everything I was doing was uh, just trying to locate with my fastball and when uh, I got 0 2 1 2 uh, just try to finish him off with the heater and uh, you know, like I said, he was calling a great game, and uh, you know, I completely trusted him, and uh, happy how things turned out. He got a hug from Walk. How much for that? He's getting better than that, right? No, he's he's an awesome dude. It was, it was awesome getting that, getting that hug. Sean, tonight your 19th start in the big leagues, and, and looking back at, let's say, your first five or six starts, and now your last 10, mm -hmm. uh, how much difference has it been for you? What what are the things that you felt that you've improved on the most uh, from earlier in the year? Um, I would, just, you know. Just having that confidence going out uh, every game, and uh, you know, just believing in myself, and knowing that I'm going to, you know, dominate that day. And you know, those first couple of games were, uh, it was, I had a couple all right ones, and there were some pretty bad ones. But uh, you know, as as the time's gone on, uh, you know, I've I've uh, kind of realized that I'm, you know, I'm I'm all right, and uh, you know, I, I can I can get these guys out, and uh, it's just just helped me out with a lot with my confidence, and uh, I was just really really happy that they uh, you know they believe in me and um, I'm just able to go out and do my job and uh, just try to grow as a pitcher. You know you seem to be very all right at the Coliseum. What is it special about pitching in Oakland. I know there are some games on the road that you have not particularly enjoyed because <laughs> of the numbers but, but what's special about here at the Coliseum. Uh, the fans are amazing you know like uh, I heard Beaumont say uh, you know even though there's might be like 15,000 people here it sounds like there's 30,000 and uh, you know the rifle crazes with the drums and <laughs> just the the whole atmosphere is awesome and uh, you know it just really relaxes me and knowing that you know everybody has my back and uh, it's just a lot of fun here so when I'm having fun it, it just everything just like on a cruise control and I can uh, you know just go out and, and uh, you know do my job. Well Sean congratulations on the win thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Right, so Sean Manai gets his fifth win and uh, I think it's interesting what he said the fact that you know you have a you don't you don't know if if you belong up here yet when you you get to the big leagues so you're kind of searching a little bit then if you get knocked around a little bit early maybe if you get knocked around for two starts it may take four good ones right. to kind of get your confidence back and I think you can tell he's starting to feel pretty confident and I think the best thing young players take it advantage of an opportunity to either pitch or to play and we've seen that with this ball club right now. All right so Sean Manai gets the win and the A's even up the series a good all around ball game for the A's tonight they win it nine to one. You've been watching A's baseball on CSN California. It's part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post game live with Brody Brazil and Bip Roberts will come your way right after the break.